Well, hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrew Taylor, and I'm the manager for technical support for services here at Sekasui Xenotech. Today, I'm gonna to be giving a brief overview of one of our drug metabolism studies, which is reaction phenotyping. Now, briefly, we offer a wide variety of in vitro DDI service study types here at Sekasui Xenotech, including studies under drug metabolism, enzyme induction, transporters, enzyme inhibition, and plasma protein binding. But today we're just gonna be focusing on reaction phenotyping. So just a brief overview of some of our drug metabolism study types. We offer reaction phenotyping, which is used to identify the enzymes that are involved in the metabolism of a drug. Metabolic stability, which is a comparison of the metabolic stability and intrinsic, intrinsic clearance among drug candidates. Metabolic profiling and MedID, which is identification of the metabolites, and also species comparison, in so much as that all these study types can be conducted using uh, test systems from various species in order to select the appropriate non-clinical species for future work. So why are drug metabolism studies important? It's important to identify the enzymes that significantly contribute to the metabolism of a drug candidate, and to be able to evaluate if the potential drug candidate might be a victim which could be a drug which is cleared by one main route of elimination, or a perpetrator, which is a factor or drug that alters the clearance of a victim drug. Now, the test systems that you choose to use in these studies depend upon the enzymes that are gonna be evaluated. For example, for SIP enzymes, we would choose human liver microsomes. Cytosol would be used for phase two enzymes, or S9 or hepatocytes can be used when investigating both SIP and phase two enzymes. Now, when it comes to the design of reaction phenotyping study, the 2020 FDA guidance has several recommendations that must be followed. First is that validated analytical methods must be used in the study design. Second, triplicate determinations must be made in the experimental design. And also, you must perform at least two different tests. Here at Sekasui Xenotech, that includes using recombinant SIP, and chemical inhibition experiments, which I'll get to momentarily. The FDA recommends looking at these seven main SIPs that are listed here. However, if the drug is not metabolized by one of these main SIPs, other enzymes need to be investigated. And lastly, positive controls must be included in all experiments. And this must include specific probe substrates that are specific to each uh, SIP enzyme being evaluated along with specific chemical inhibitors. So at Sekasui Xenotech, we have a standard design for a reaction phenotyping study that meets all the guidance requirements. Our reaction phenotyping study can be broken down into two phases. The first is the preliminary study, which we also call the time and protein. Once this is conducted, it's followed up with the additional recombinant SIP experiments and chemical inhibition experiments. And, these, and the chemical inhibition is usually carried out in human liver microsomes. Additionally, we offer a correlation analysis. However, requests for these are very rare, so I'm not gonna go into the details of that today, but please be aware that it's a service that we offer if you so require it. So the preliminary design. The preliminary evaluation is the first step in our reaction phenotyping studies. This is conducted to establish initial rate conditions that will be used in the pooled human liver microsomes. In the preliminary experiment, we generally look at substrate loss of the drug. However, we can also look at metabolite formation. And in these experiments are designed to see that substrate loss is proportional with respect to the incubation time and the protein concentration that's used. The incubation times can be long and stretch up to about two hours. But down here is an example of some data from one of the preliminary experiments. On the y-axis, we show the percent of substrate that's remaining, and the x-axis shows the incubation time. The different symbols represent different concentrations of test article that was incubated in this experiment. The design generally consists of three concentrations of test article, three concentrations of the test system, so how much protein is present, along with four incubation time points and an initial time point. After conducting the preliminary evaluation, We'll follow up with recombinant SIP and chemical inhibition experiments. Now, these two methods are complementary to each other. The first I'm going to discuss is the recombinant SIP experiment. 
In our recombinant SIP experiments, the recombinant enzymes are expressed in bacteria or insect cells. But it's important to remember that the enzyme expression is different than what would be expressed in vivo. The recombinant SIP experiment basically will show us what enzymes are capable of metabolizing the drug. A general study design consists of one or two concentrations of the test article, and we look at a panel of the seven standard SIP enzymes that are recommended in the 2020 FDA guidance. We do one concentration of the recombinant SIPs. However, we also include some additional time and protein samples that are incubated in human liver microsomes. And these are compared back to the preliminary time and protein experiment just to confirm that the experiment was conducted under initial rate conditions. And for this experiment design, we only look at one time point. Now, this is an example of some of the data that would come out of a recombinant SIP experiment. Again, on the y-axis, we show the percent of substrate that's remaining. And on the x-axis, we have our controls and the various SIPs that we're investigating. In general, anything greater than 20% loss is indicative that that SIP enzyme is involved in the metabolism of that compound. So for example, here, we have a line at 80%. So it looks like SIP 2C8 is involved in the metabolism of this compound and potentially 2C19. The second type of SIP reaction phenotyping experiment is the chemical inhibition experiment. Now, unlike the recombinant SIP experiment, which shows what SIP enzymes can metabolize the drug, this experiment is designed to show what SIP enzymes do metabolize the drug in vivo. For our chemical inhibition experiments, we use chemical inhibitors that are specific to the SIP enzymes in question. And typically we use metabolism dependent SIP inhibitors because they're longer lasting and better for the longer, time, uh, the longer incubation times. However, for CYP3A4 and 2D6, we also include some direct inhibitors. Now, the design of these experiments is to look at one or two concentrations of test article again. We look at the same panel of the main CYP, um, CYP enzymes. We use one concentration of human liver microsomes, and we have one incubation time point. Now, this typical reaction phenotyping study design that we use mostly for SIP enzymes can also be applied for other enzymes. However, the approach may be limited depending on the enzymes that are being evaluated, as a couple of conditions need to be met. First, is there a recombinant test system available for the enzyme in question? And second, are there chemical specific chemical inhibitors available for the enzyme that you'd like to investigate? For example, for UGT enzymes, we have a large panel of recombinant UGT enzymes available, so we're able to perform recombinant UGT experiments. However, when it comes to chemical inhibition, we're limited to only four UGT enzymes, as we only have specific chemical inhibitors for these four UGTs. Additionally, correlation analysis is not recommended when looking at UGT enzymes due to variability in the UGT enzyme activity uh, across individuals. So in addition to the reaction phenotyping services that we offer, we also offer a number of products at Sekazui Xenotech so you can conduct these experiments in your own laboratory. For test systems, these include subcellular fractions, recombinant enzymes, primary hepatocytes, and we also offer a reaction phenotyping kit. In addition to these test systems, we have support reagents that go along with all these test system types. And additionally, we offer technical support and consulting services. So I'd like to thank you very much for your time for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us using the Contact Us tab on our website. Or you can also contact your regional account manager if you're interested in placing a reaction phenotyping or other drug metabolism study. Thank you very much.